Tammy Ritchie and I'm from Why You Can Too. I'm the uh, Connecting Manifesting Queen and I've been on this show with Prosper, which is the online prosperity show. And by you watching today, you're going to be learning some tips and tricks on how you can live your best life yet. Help you discover your why, decide you can and live the life that you deserve. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I'm going to ask you a question. Why can't you? And to answer that question, we've brought in the facilitator herself, Tammy. Tammy Ritchie, how are you doing, my love? I'm amazing, Prosper. How are you? Thank you so much for inviting me on your amazing show today. Fantastic. So obviously, if people are watching this show, Tammy, Half of them are entrepreneurs that are trying to be, do, and have a business that's profitable and enjoyable. But all they see is other people like yourself, um, you know, um, manifesting, maybe it's a property of yours that you want, manifesting riches or just manifesting whatever it is that they choose, living a life that they actually deserve, having fun and actually being so happy about their life and they are just asking themselves why not me or they're just asking themselves why can't i be like that so that's the reason why we brought you in here and so you can explain to us what it is that you actually do and how you are so amazing and everything else that you seem to be touching that is turning into gold as we speak in any case tummy thank you so much for your time on the show today tell us a little bit about your story and how you actually decided you two can be do and have a happier existence okay well it all started um for 17 years i was an aircraft maintenance engineer and i felt so blessed that's where i met my amazing husband but during that time, Prosper, I kind of felt, you know what, I had three children. I was starting to get tired, worn out. I was questioning what else is there. And unbeknownst to me um, at that time, we actually moved to the Gold Coast and we're pretty excited. Um, and we bought our first home and I was unpacking boxes in our home. And I had my little baby boy, he was just 16 months of age and he was right within my sight. Whilst I was unpacking boxes, I got this terrible feeling. Something came over me and I just couldn't believe it because of what I could, I physically couldn't see it, but everything led to my intuition telling me that he was drowning in our pool. And I thought, how could that be? I didn't hear a splash or a scream. He was right within my sight. I was busy unpacking boxes. It couldn't be. I'm gonna go looking around the house, jumping through boxes, um, you know, jumping over boxes, and hopefully I'll find him using my makeup to paint the wall or something. He was just 16 months of age, right? So I couldn't find him anywhere. So against every, um, parent's, every parent's worst nightmare became my reality as I took um, steps closer to the pool and I actually found my own flesh and blood, my little boy that I was meant to be protecting, floating and unconscious in our backyard pool on my watch. I was absolutely horrified. I could not believe that that was happening to me. So I raced and I screamed out. My husband was at Bunnings getting child locks and I, um, I yelled out as much as I could for someone to come and help, but no one came. So I had to reach in, go through the pool fence, grab him out of the pool. He was lifeless in my arms like a rag doll. And Prosper, I remember thinking at that time, this is on my watch. I'm supposed to be protecting him. How can I ring my husband and my other two children and tell them our little boy that we tried so hard for was no longer with us and it was my fault. So I had him in my arms and running through the home, trying to call the home phone number to call triple zero, sorry. And the phone wasn't even connected. So everything that was meant to help me wasn't available to me right then and there. So what I had to do then, and I'd always um, been very intuitive and seen things over time. And so what I knew, I was trained in first aid and CPR. As an engineer, we had to do that. Um, but I didn't feel it was delivered properly. So I was like left scrambled thinking, oh, what am I supposed to do? It's a baby. How many compressions? I was so confused. So what I did is I reached out and I asked. And I asked, I believe, my maker. And asked him to help me to give me the strength. 
I was able to pull myself together enough to do CPR on my little boy, which is one of the hardest things I've, I think I've ever done. And the moment he started breathing, I just could not believe it. That moment changed my life forever. I felt so blessed. I felt like I needed to yell out from the rooftops that this happened to me or perhaps did it happen for me? You see, the thing is, the way that the training was delivered to me before, I didn't feel confident. So I knew there was a need. I knew that there was a different way that needed to be, the training needed to be delivered to people so that if they were ever in my situation, they could have the same success that I had. Because many, 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 many others weren't, have not been so lucky. So the paramedics could not believe it when they arrived to my home and they actually heard my baby screaming and they could not believe it. So what, normally when with immersions, they're used to actually seeing, you know, the sad stories. So they, with my permission, asked if I'd go into the media. So for many, many years, I was carrying out drowning stories throughout all channels nationally. And because they wanted to actually use my story to show others that I'm a mum, I'm a parent, I'm a wife, I'm a lover, I'm just a normal person. I was just unpacking boxes and my little boy went missing and I was able to save him. So a long story short, Prosper, but basically I didn't know what I was doing. I made the decision I need to give up my engineering and I need to follow and I needed to help others and empower others to do the same. I didn't use my head. What I did at that moment was a key that tuned into my heart and I just needed to follow. So all the people that I needed to meet just came into my field without me even doing anything. First Aid, why you came to, became, um, we uh, won a lot of national business awards and became highly sought after in a lot of universities and tourism sector and a lot of large companies plus the community as well. It was making a difference and people were loving the fact that it wasn't just the training but it was a show. So when I do the training, it's like a lot of high energy, we laugh, we cry, you know, but basically we anchor the information in. Now, I did that for about seven years. I've been heavily immersed in personal development as well um, through my mindset because I believe that um, with anything in life, your mindset is everything. So um, I immersed in T. Uh, T. Harbecker, plus I'm also a Tony Robbins, um, training to be a Tony Robbins leader as well. And so with that, I could implement the things that I learned from there into my training to, to differentiate. But what also I was given as well, Lisa Nichols was my um, speaker, coach. She wrote The Chicken Soup for the Soul and was also in The Secret and was also interviewed on Oprah's Couch, which Oprah is one of my heroes as well. Um, so I was so blessed to have her and David T.S. Wood that were my mentors and coaches for about 18 months. And I met some fabulous people during that time as well. And whilst during that time, I had the opportunity to speak on stage at a lot of events and um, get receive feedback as well. And one of the coaches had actually said, well, we cannot believe how you can engage the audience and how the energy is up so high. So in the feedback, they actually asked me what I did. And I told them about my story and I told them about my training academy. And I was so proud of that at that time. And by that time, I'd been running about seven years and they could not believe it. They were flabbergasted. They said, you cannot believe someone with your energy is actually delivering. Do these people even know what they're getting? And I was like quite flattered. And I went, wow. And that stopped me in my tracks to think, okay, what if I actually got some trainers that deliver my training? What if I could teach other people to deliver my training, which would free me up to actually then train other things, which is mindset, personal development, and helping others remove the clutter and helping others do exactly what I did, which was um, give up my engineering career because at that stage I was feeling unfulfilled. I was asking, I was questioning, is there more? What else could I be doing? And I was actually questioning that. And there's loads of other people that are doing that right now. Loads of other people that um, aren't living fulfilled lives. They're not doing their, their purpose. They're just going through the day, through the paces, feeling like a leaf floating in the wind. And I was exactly the same. So what if I could help others to find their purpose? Because I believe I found my purpose the day my little boy drowned. What if I could help others um, be aligned with their purpose and remove the clutter in their life and help them live their best life yet? Wouldn't that be pretty amazing? And that's why you can too was for 
formed and you can too is about mentoring those um, running workshops and retreats we've got a retreat coming up in Fiji it's a ladies retreat on the 17th to the 24th of Feb in beautiful Benga Island um, and again it was totally manifested um, I'm actually um, doing a joint venture with the island because they wanted to add value to their island and so they asked me, well, so I was on vacation over there, if I would run the retreats for them. So it's pretty exciting. So it's not something that I'm doing myself. It's actually something that we're doing together, which is really quite amazing. But what I found, Prosper, is during that time is the energy vibration that I was lifting. I run a workshop called Increase Your Vibe to Attract Your Tribe and um, many other programs as well. And they all kind of run into each other. So the first one is all about um, increasing their energy vibration because that's what I found by um, the processes that I do every day, like the meditation and the yoga and um, the different things that I do to actually um, get myself, my mindset right so that I can do what I do is something that I teach others as well. And that's something I've done my whole life because I did have a childhood that wasn't the best. But what I could do is I could visualize, I could meditate, meditate, I could manifest. And what I found during that time and even now is what I actually um, focus on, I can create. So even the drowning that day was something that I manifested. And I'm not proud of that, but what I realized is I took on someone else's pain. So there was another mum that actually lost her child in the community where I was living and it rocked me. I took on her pain. I could not believe that someone had been through something like that. And so um, all of that energy that I took on, it came out as a manifestation. So I now realize that um, not only can you manifest good things, but you can absolutely manifest bad things. And being empathetic to people is a gift but you can be empathetic and then just um, remove that energy. It's important that you remove that energy because you can create different things. The beautiful property that I'm on right now was a total manifestation because the home that we lived in when my little boy had the drowning incident, there was tragedy after tragedy after tragedy. Um, I knew we were in there for nine years and I took nine years to cleanse the home, to cleanse it spiritually. I, my energy was just not suited there. But I didn't want to hand the home over to someone else in that en with that energy state. So I took the time to cleanse it. When we made the decision to sell, it sold like that. It sold, um, yeah, without even advertising, it sold. And it, we had to be out of the property within three weeks. We knew that we wanted to be on property. And I knew exactly what I was looking for in the next property because I wasn't going to settle in the, that, that first property that we moved into, I was sick of looking at properties and I settled. And that, that's another gift. You Learning to tune into your intuition and actually realising that you have that the gift. And we all have it, but sometimes we can dismiss it. So my training is all about that as well. It's all through experiences that I've had myself that I share and then help others to do the same. And that's why you can too existed. Absolutely. Wow. Thank you so much. First of all, for your story. Second of all, you know, the value that is packed in that story in, in and of itself and just your strength in talking about it and, you know, providing value at the same time. I really, really applaud you for that. We might as well just end the show on that note, but obviously you do have quite a lot of value to unpack. Um, from some of the things that you're talking about, obviously your life story and your experiences have now created all this value for other people. And you've got them to understand that they can actually overcome life's greatest challenges and they can actually really redesign, um, you know, their lives. So I want to just maybe paint a picture right here because a lot of people are in an environment that's already toxic. They are in an environment where they cannot escape out of. The people that are around them or the family, the jobs that they have, you've managed to escape um, all of that and redesigned and manifested, um, you know, uh, what you now have, which is, you know, you know, literally changing people's lives. But some people cannot do that. All right. Some people, if they could, they would be able to, um, you know, redesign their lives. So can you walk us through how you help people to be aware of 
where they are and why it's causing them that grief and how, you know, you, you take them out, um, you know, of that sort of situation. Sure. Basically I share with them to say to them that nothing has meaning except the meaning that they give it. And um, where we focus, energy flows, energy flows, what we focus on. And um, basically if you focus the energy on the situation at hand, you're going to manifest more of that situation because the subconscious cannot differentiate between what's happened and what hasn't and what, you know, what the reality is that you really want to achieve. So what if you could focus on the outcome that you actually wanted? So even during the chaos, when the chaos is happening, if we actually focus on that, um, the energy just expands. Okay. And we attract more of that. But what if you could take a moment and meditate and actually see yourself, Feel, put the energy there on the outcome that you want to achieve and be so focused on that and action orientated towards that, then things just show up in the energy field because everything is energy and what we focus on expands. So it's about changing the focus. So during the time that you're going through the chaos, of course, it's you can have that victim mentality and of course it can be full on. And sometimes I've got to take my own medicine as well to go, you know what, you know, when you're going through chaos and it's like a massive mountain and you think, oh, I can't breathe, I feel so overwhelmed, blah, 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 you know, then you just stop, just stop and breathe. Breathing is one of the most important things. Taking the time to meditate. Um, it's filling your own cup up first, you know, taking the meditation, the time to focus on where you want to go. And you don't know how you're going to get there. You don't need to know how. But once you're taking the attention there, the subconscious doesn't understand that you don't know. So it will send you more of that. And the people that you need to meet will just randomly just show up or the house that you need to be in will just show up. Or, you know, I've sold many properties myself um, by just having the um, intention there, the clarity and the purpose and just having sold across it, by taking a photo of it and sold and putting the price that I want on my fridge, bingo, it sells. Because it's the intention and the clarity of all that. So basically when people come to me, they come to me and I'm not actually... I don't even need to advertise. People will come to me and they'll say, because I'm trying to be the change in the world that I want to see. So they're seeing my lifestyle. They're seeing the way I live. And they'll come to me and say, can you help me? Because I see something in me that sometimes I don't even see myself because I'm just going through the <laughs> thing. So there's definitely um, merit in that. So when they come to me and they ask for help, usually in a group situation, I work so much better. And we work out what was their earliest memory on um, what was their earliest plan. Well, because when the pain is bad enough, that's when someone will change as well. So I take them to the pain, and the pain that they've actually um, taken on has actually changed the whole direction, their whole life. It's actually made them um, fearful, so that when change does happen, they go into the little shell and they clam up. But if we could actually get them to face the pain, which is what I do, so there's loads of tears, and actually change it, change the meaning, get them to see the beauty of the situation instead of what the outcome and looking at the negative aspect. And that basically then changes the whole energy that is going to be flowing into them. So there's a little bit of a process that we do go through to do that. But once they do that, then it's like the floodgates are open and they'll actually see they will be more clear and more intentional and they'll actually see and they get excited because then they actually um, actually tune into their own heart instead of their minds. And once they tune into their heart, it's just a matter of following. It's like a little brick road. Like the divine energy comes through them and they just need to follow and, and ask. Like so every day I ask, you know, um, to show me what I need to um, to do for my day to, to actually allow the divine energy to flow through me to my heart so that I need to meet who I need to meet or um, thank, you know, thanks for the best people and the best resources coming into my life to guide me, to show me because, you know, like um, people like Tony Robbins, um, I'm one of his doing his leadership program. What I see in Tony is, yes, people go to him, they flock to him because they see something in him. I've had so many similar experiences to Tony that it's not so funny. It, it, it's just crazy. Some of the incidents that he's had that he shares that I've also been through. And the thing is what we've done, the same thing, has actually changed our focus and changed our energy. So when I'm in a program like Tony's programs, um, yes, I'm learning something every day from him, but what I more get is the energy to say, hey, you're on the right path. 
just keep on doing what you need to do and impacting the world in a massive way. Because people are crying out right now. They're unsure of what they need to do. They're scared of failure. They're scared of what other people will think. You know, once you, if your why is bigger than your why not, when my little boy drowned and I had a message to deliver, I needed every single parent that had a child to actually know that this can happen. 20 seconds can change your life like that. Okay, people think that, oh, you know, it's not going to happen to me. I never thought that it would happen to me either. But what if it did happen? So I needed to empower the people to know that, hey, these are the gifts that you have. You just need to follow. And to when it comes down to it, if I didn't do what I did, my little boy would not be with me. So my, st my story is very, very powerful, but not just for the first aid side of it or the CPR side of it. It's deeper than that. It's about jumping anyway. I gave up a whole career, 17 year career, and went into the unknown. Had no idea what I needed to do um, or how I needed to get there. Many people would say to me, you need a business plan, blah, blah, blah. And it would freak me out. I'd be like, oh my goodness, business plan, no way. And all, all I was doing was things that I was doing my whole life, every single day, like my meditation, my visualization, my, you know, filling my own cup up every day and seeing where I needed to go. I knew I had a message to deliver to the world and I knew that every single parent needed to know that message and the rest is history. And I've just basically taken all those, all the knowledge that I've learned from that and put it into other, so that others can actually do the same. So that they, they don't need to be fearful either. Um, yeah, actually we've, I've got a book that I've co-authored as well, which is on my website as well. And it's all about that. It's about the transition going from corporate world into the unknown and creating success as well. Understandable. Well. Wow. Thank, thank you so much for that. You, you, you talk a lot about intuition. I'm just really uh, mindful of that, you know, person that has probably, you know, been trying to be in tune with who they are as a person. I'm being mindful of the everyday entrepreneur who's really trying to have their business off the ground. And, you know, there's a lot of noise around them as to who to listen to, um, what to read, what to watch. And, um, you know, from what you are saying, you, you are elaborating to the fact that if you do remove all of that clutter that is in your life, you would create much needed space, you know, so that you can actually listen to your inner guided GPS system, um, which is your intuition. All right. Like I would give you an analogy that I know everybody else, you know, goes through when you're driving in a place that you're not familiar with, every time you get lost, the first thing you reach out for is to lower the volume on your radio. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I think this is, you know, psychologically for everybody else to just lower the volume on the radio so you can concentrate or listen to what the GPS is saying. So there's a lot of clutter around us, but people don't realize or don't know what time it is, um, you know, to, to turn down the, the, the volume on the radio. What sort of um, ideals or patterns that you can suggest for people to actually, first of all, notice that this is clutter and it's not needed in their life. And then second of all, actions that they can take in order to actually listen to the vital GPS system, which is their intuition. Because if people know how to do that, then, you know, there wouldn't be a need for your job, you know, to start off with. So how, is, is there a way that you can, maybe you, you use yourself that other people can follow suit in order for them to actually listen to their intuition? Yeah, perfect. And it's not until you actually analyze that and you think, oh my goodness, not everyone is doing what you're doing because you just assume that everyone would know. But you nailed it. You said this creating the space is where the magic is. And, um, you know, doing the meditation and stuff like that is where the magic is. So because if we're too busy, 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 and at the time when I was actually um, an engineer, I was working full time as an engineer. I was also at university studying. I mean, I failed to see a lot of stuff and then I got very sick as well. And I'm um, actually um, regained my health as, as a result of that, of all of this together. Um, it's been, a, you know, just an amazing gift as well. But what I found is when I had my little boy, I had the space. So my life was so busy, 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 busy. Then all of a sudden I had the space. So those signs that I needed to actually hear, I could actually hear. So it's kind of like um, where I live now is on the property. I've got loads of trees and I just love it. It's all energy because energy is absolutely everything. But if you go down into the Gold Coast, there's just building upon building upon building and there's people and there's cars and it's just all energy. 
okay? So what if you could actually give yourself the, the time, even just 10 minutes a day, where you go down to the beach and it's just you time. And you might think that, oh my goodness, I'm too busy. I don't have the time to do this. I don't have the time to do this. But it's filling your own cup up first. And by filling your own cup up first, it's amazing what opens up. Because you think, oh, you're so busy, you can't do this, you can't do this. But then it actually breeds clarity by giving yourself the time. So then you um, tend to actually listen to your heart rather than your mind. Because your mind is the thing that will talk you out of um, the opportunities that come your way. But if you can actually um, ch um, try to turn off that chatter or that clutter, as you were saying, and just tune into your heart. And it's in all aspects of your life as well, prosperity. So clutter, if you've got clutter, like if you're in your office and you've got, you know, boxes and, you know, all this type of thing, you're not allowing the energy to flow, okay, of course the energy is not going to be able to penetrate. But what if you could just free up everything like I've done in my home or just like minimize and just have the, you know, the special things and just allow the energy to flow. Like when I've got my deck finally built, you know, I'm going to allow all the tree energy to come in. I've got these beautiful big glass doors that will allow that to happen. So you can create, I'm not saying that you need to um, buy a big multi-million dollar home to do that. You can do that at any time. So just, just allowing yourself, uh, yourself time each day to have you time before you start your day. So there's some certain things that I do every single day which will help your viewers as well <clears throat> and, and this will help them tune into their heart more so than just the meditation because people find it difficult to meditate. But let me tell you, I was the same. I know how they feel because <laughs> I felt the same way. But what I found is that what if I meditated whilst I was actually um, you know, working at the gym or doing something like that? And that can be a little bit tricky, but it's kind of like an incantation that you're actually tuning that energy in, okay? So you're basically taking your mind away and dreaming and seeing what do I want to achieve and putting your energy to that as well. Um, another thing that I often do each day as well, it's called stacking. So what I look at, because in our world, there's negative energy everywhere. You just got to turn the TV on. There's the news and it's in our face and it really does affect your energy. But if you can actually fill your own cup up with nice energy, it doesn't allow the negative energy to penetrate in. And so the way that you can do this is um, think of three things. I mean, yeah, three um, different attributes that you might have. Um, so three things that you've been proud of somewhere in your life it could be when you're little could be when you're older could be when you want an award whatever it is but you're thinking of three things and you're taking yourself there not just seeing it but feeling the energy what what you felt at that time and you're just going there very very briefly very very short then you move on to happiness you think of three things where you're extremely happy in your life um you know, it could be now, it could be something that you're looking forward to, it could be something that, you know, you, you want to achieve or it could be something that you had that happened to you in your childhood. And then you're thinking about three things that you're excited about. Either you've achieved and you were so excited that you were bursting. You know, you, you know those times when you were little, when you were a little kid and you didn't have all the, life didn't happen to you, you didn't have all the worries, you know, like you couldn't sleep because you're going on holidays. You take yourself there and you think of those three things as well. And then you think of three things as well that just made you laugh. They're uncontrollably, they're just crazy, silly things that made you laugh. So you can just see what then happens to your energy. So when you're then putting that energy and you're filling your energy up, we're all energy. So basically, if you look at a dartboard, we're in the middle of the dartboard. Someone like Oprah is on the outer part of that dartboard. Now, if we allow life to happen to us instead of for us and we sit in the middle and we're not working on ourselves, we're going to just hang around that little field, okay? Um, you're not going to want to get out of the comfort zone. And let me tell you, getting out of the comfort zone and when it's inconvenient is when the goal, when the you're in your power zone and the real gold actually happens. So whilst you're working on yourself every day, your energy is increasing and then you start to actually attract different people and then more people and more people. Then all of a sudden you're in a lift with Oprah, for instance, and you don't know how it even happened. Like I've had so many incidents like that that I'm like, wow, how did this even happen? I could not have created this. My business plan would never, ever have allowed this to happen because when we think of the details, that's allowing our mind to kick in. But instead, why not, you know, fill your own cup up first, do your energy, have your meditation. The meditation does not need to be long either. It's just um, very, very short. 
it's a, again just seeing your goals um whatever goals and it's kind of like just dreaming like if you're when you're remember when you were a little kid and you had these big dreams and you're like oh i want to be this when i grow up well when when did we stop dreaming when did we stop having those goals it's about bringing that back in bringing that excitement which actually it helps the energy as well and another awesome thing that you can do if you find that you've got people in your life that um you know, sometimes might irritate you. It could be a family member. It could be a loved one as well. Now, when you see them, all you see, if you focus on, is that negative aspect of them. And so even if they say something nice to you, you just get snappy or get angry because, you know, all you see is that. But if you can actually turn that around even and think of, you know, th three things that you're thankful for with that person. You're going through three different family members or three different friends and you're just seeing them as, oh my goodness, I'm so thankful that you've come into my life. So then the negative things just don't show up. So it's kind of like putting up a protective barrier, I guess, is what I'm trying to say um, for your own thing. So yes, we create the space because where we create the space, um, magic is definitely created. Um, we allow ourselves to have the time. Um, Tony Robbins calls it an hour of power. But, you know, a lot of people don't have the hour, but it doesn't need to be an hour. It just needs to be a little bit of time where you're filling your own cup up and you're actually creating your life and you're seeing your goals and stuff like that. And you're being more direct so the subconscious knows where you want to go. You've got, you breathe clarity, you've got intentions, and then the rest just happens. Obviously, you still have to put actions in place, but those actions then just come to you. As I said, I don't even advertise. People will just come to me and say, hey, can you help me? And I'm like, wow, that's incredible. Like, you know, um, and that's why I realized at that time when people started coming to me and asking me for the help that, hey, they must see something in me that I don't even know myself because I'm just randomly just doing it. Okay. But um, obviously if they're seeing it in me, that's, that's value. So I need to actually help share that. And that's why You Can Too came about. Um, I do help other people with their health as well because I've come from that aspect as well. I've had a lot of massive adversities, but I believe that they're all gifts that have actually helped open me up. My little boy had drowning, which opened me up, but he also had a massive drug overdose. It went on to many, many, many years of massive tragedies whilst we're in that home. But were they gifts? Absolutely, because how much did I learn during that time? How much did it wake me up to say, hey, I could allow this to overcome me and focus on the negative aspects? Or what if I could actually, um, in the chaos, visualize the outcome that I wanted to, fill my own cup with all the little steps that I just told you about that I do every day, and focus my energy where I wanted to go? And that's what was happening. I was actually achieving all of these things, even in my own health. Um, eight and a half years of ill health on chemo therapy drugs as well yes I was very unwell and I could have let that overcome me with three small children but how does someone like that overcome because the, and the mindfulness the mindset the, the um, I guess yeah, the mindfulness that you put to that and the mindset and the attention that you put to it and if I see myself as I'm in pain I'm in pain like a little girl falls over she trips over she skins her knee she looks up She's looking for mum. She's looking for mum's approval. Is mum going to pick me up and coddle me? Or is mum going to allow me? So if mum actually decides, you know what, she's skinned her knee, that's the way she's going to learn. Because remember, that's how children learn, to walk by falling over, right? So if we just um, allow her to just get up, she'll brush herself off and she'll run off. She's forgotten about it in seconds. And that's the way we learn. So if someone falls over and we rush to their attention, we're actually um, giving them energy to that attention, to that, to that sore point. But if we allowed them and just dismissed it and allowed them to actually see themselves, that's the way they learn. That's the way they grow. That's the way they get out of the comfort zone. That's the way they get on that platform. They have no fear. They do the five-second rule and they jump anyway. They go into the unknown like I did when I gave up my engineering career. The unknown had no idea what I was doing but how it created massive success as a result. You know, yeah. that's exactly what you need to do. Absolutely. <clears throat> wow. I was uh, taking notes as you were speaking there um, because that, that is a lecture in and of itself. So obviously all of these parts that you've been, um, you know, letting us know is stuff that you help uh, people, you know, on their journey to actually really discover their extraordinary self. 
and yeah. you take them across to the Baca. Is it Baca Lagoon or back? How do you pronounce that? It's called Benga. It's B- Benga. B-E-Q-A, Lagoon Resort. And basically, I've got to share with you, if you don't mind, Prosper, how that actually came about. Right. Okay? Yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. It's pretty amazing and it adds, it's just another manifestation. But basically, my husband and I are both um, doing Tony Robbins programs and my husband was going to Life and Wealth Mastery with Tony, which is at Benga. I'm sorry, not at Benga, it's at Fiji. And he actually did it in San Diego. And whilst we're on the holiday, um, when we planned on going on the holiday, we wanted to go on a cruise. We wanted to get the family together because our children are getting older now and just get together. Um, So we decided we'd try and go on a cruise. All the cruises were booked out. Okay, what's next? My husband said, he works for Virgin. Let's go to Fiji. Okay, so we tried to go to Fiji and, um, and that was totally booked out as well. Just hang on one sec, sorry. Um, and so basically I thought I'm going to actually, I had a goal in mind and I want our family to go to Fiji because we haven't been to Fiji before and everything was sold out. Okay. So then all of a sudden in my inbox, this Benga Island resort came up and I was like, wow, I'm going to give them a call. And it just so happened to be that that time that we had was totally free. And in fact, everywhere else was booked out. And in fact, we actually had the island partly to ourselves for a little while. Anyway, we're on the boat going over to the island and we're all pretty excited. And my husband says, Tam, you should run retreats here. And um, basically, um, he basically planted the seed and I said to him, honey, we're on a holiday and I'm like trying to be as present as I can be. Yeah. But whilst we were actually... um, snorkeling every day because literally you can put a mask on walk out from the island and you're actually snorkeling with um turtles and, and it's like being in an aquarium it's absolutely fantastic it's one wow. of the best dive locations in the world so there i am snorkeling meditating whilst i'm snorkeling and i could see all the ladies all different shapes and sizes in their bikinis coming from all around the globe coming together on this island and i could actually see it and i could feel it and it kind of it was just unbelievable right because my pl- husband had planted the seed now we go up for lunch, the resort manager comes over and says, doesn't say anything to me, but he says it to my husband. Um, she says to my husband, I really want to add value to the island. I want to run retreats. But I don't want to do it on my own. I'm looking for someone. He said, what? Have you spoken to my wife? She said, no. He goes, oh my goodness, I think you have to. And that's how it all kind of happened. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, so it was pretty amazing. So as a result of that, we got together in the bikini. I was in my bikini and sarong and we just created the whole thing. Wow. And it's, a global, it's a global retreat. So ladies are coming from all around the globe. This is the first one that we're doing. There's going to be many. So we're going to do couples retreats as well. We're going to do health retreats. Um, basically, I'm the retreat person for the island, which is pretty amazing. It's such a spectacular place. Um, so it's just me and um, running the retreats there. And basically, the ladies come from all around the globe. Um, they can come. And the island itself, the resort itself, actually market to the UK, to America, to Canada, and to Australia. So it didn't mean that I was just marketing to my friends. It meant that it was expanding. And the beauty of that is then people, they'll come to the retreat. They'll actually see the value. They'll, they'll, train, they'll change. They'll be transformed. But I don't allow them just to go home and then just do nothing. I put them into, I offer them the um, opportunity to um, form part of the UK into community for accountability. So they don't go home, life doesn't happen, they don't go back to their old habits. They don't get a chance with that. It's all accountability. So that's the whole beauty of it, is it becomes global. We've got this sisterhood from around the globe where we're helping keep each other at a higher level, at a higher state, and making sure that we do as we say. We're not just, um, yeah. Great. So that's that's the first one, the the life mastery um, retreats there. Now, how can people, you know, be a part of this, or is a um, application process, or how can people get a hold of you just to get more information regarding um, the retreats that you're running there, uh, Tammy? So, if you go to um, www.yucan2, the number two, dot com dot au. Um, everything is on there is what to expect, what to bring, any frequently asked questions, and a place to book as well. 
there's a um, tab where they can book their space as well. It's pretty amazing. And as I said, um, we form part of a community which support each other and we grow together as well. Understandable. Do you um, have any sort of last words for those people that are really not clear on where they really want to go and they're losing, you know, the, the, first of all, the clarity for them to be able to actually really, really, um, you know, understand their intuition because that seems to be the theme of your um, entire existence because you've listened a lot to yourself and manifested um, whatever it is ha that has come across to you. So it seems like a um, well-to-do gift or is it something that anyone else can actually um, reach out, learn and have, or is it particularly a Tammy Ricci uh, exclusive? Oh, no, 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 absolutely not. And I do feel chosen though, like absolutely. I do feel that, oh my goodness, they're gifts and I feel so blessed to be able to have done all this on my own basically to come up with it. Um, but we all have this and we all forget, we all get busy. Life happens, we get busy with our children, with our husbands. Our, all, our needs actually get put down at the bottom. But if we flipped it over and actually put out um, energy to the needs that we want, then the whole thing changes as well. So um, last minute thing is don't ever, ever feel that you're not enough because you are enough. Because we're all God's children and we all have unique gifts and we all have a purpose. So going through life and feeling unfulfilled and feeling like a leaf in the wind, that's amazing energy because that means that you're open for change. You're ready. You need to, if you mimic those that have been there and done it before you, um, great leaders, and you can accelerate your own success without having to go through that. You're learning from them the easy way. So I encourage you to, um, to not allow anxiety to kick in, but instead realize that that perturbation, that after the perturbation become, becomes massive success. So contact me to, um, to jump on board so that I can actually help you with some more tools, tips, and just understand where you're coming from because you might not even see the gifts that you possess yourself um, unless you actually spend the time to talk to someone about it. And life is such a short time. We're only here for such a short time. Do you want to, you have to ask yourself the question, do you want to be known for your clean floors or your clean house? Or do you want to be known for the people that you've been able to impact and influence through the life that you've been created, that you've been, that you've um, created as a result? So, yeah, I look forward to Speaking to many of you and hopefully seeing you at the um, at one of the retreats coming up. The one we've got coming up is the 17th to the 24th of Feb in 2018. And it's only open for ladies, but guys, we also are going to have um, other future retreats for the gentlemen as well. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. I was about to jump off and start packing, but obviously I'm not invited. But... Okay. um. I can't thank you enough, Tammy, for your time, your level of experience and the depth that you just shared with us on the show today. And for whoever has been watching up until now, thank you so much. And I do implore you to actually subscribe to this channel because, you know, the wealth of information that we are sharing uh, with our valued audience is you know, out of this world. So I just really want that um, from the words of uh, Tammy, from what she's been explaining, just jump into life, you know, stand in your power and actually really discover your gifts and learn that, you know, from somebody like Tammy, who's, you know, like she said, a mom like you um, or an entrepreneur like yourself or just an ordinary human can actually manifest and be, do and have, um, you know, a life that is of you know your own expectation so you don't have to be somebody who is out of this world there's a lot of relatable people that you can actually see living a life of their dreams and you too can um actually experience it because you know what you're worth it now tell me i can't thank you enough once again thank you so much for your generosity on the show today thank you so much for having me and one last thing as well is um what if you could connect people and actually listen to their stories? So people will buy from you from um, those they like, love and trust. And the way that you're going to do that is by asking people what they do. You know, what is it, where they're from? What is their why? And then, you know, um, instead of actually just saying, I do this, this and this, 
And then you can actually then refer people's services and become known as a connector. So what I like to think is I'm a um, connecting manifesting queen. <laughs> That's what it is. Absolutely. Um, and um, definitely, I will change the title right at the start there. The Connecting Manifesting, manifesting Queen. Queen. <laughs> right. <laughs> thank you once again there, Tammy. Yeah, thank you so much for um, organising this interview and for um, being so passionate about what you do and for you know helping entrepreneurs like myself get our messages out there. It's just invaluable. Thank you so much from the bottom of my heart. Absolutely. Thank you once again. Thank you.